Hey there, Otto from DigitalOcean here, and today I want to talk to you about adding interactivity to your Hugo websites. Now, developers love Hugo, and if you're not familiar, Hugo is an incredibly fast framework for building static websites built with the Go programming language. Developers love Hugo not only for its speed, but its robust content management system, allowing you to organize your content however you want and paired with this powerful templating language to represent that content in almost any use case in any way imaginable. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks of working with Hugo is working with dynamic data and adding interactivity to your Hugo website. Hugo primarily concerns itself with being a really, really good, really powerful static site generator, but when it comes to working with dynamic data, it does tend to fall short. But there is one trick that Hugo has up its sleeve that allows you to very easily work with dynamic data. And that is a method called getJSON that is built into the Hugo framework. GetJSON is a built-in function of Hugo that allows you to get remote data from an API endpoint. This function is called at build time and its results are cached. So when you go to build your application, this method is going to get executed, get any remote data and store it as part of your Hugo deployment. And when we combine getJSON with serverless functions, we can add a whole lot of interactivity without sacrificing the performance that Hugo brings. Now, what are serverless functions? If you're not familiar, serverless functions are small pieces of business logic that run on demand and scale automatically as needed. And these serverless functions, when integrated with static websites, can be really, really powerful. And I'll show you one example of that in this video. Now, DigitalOcean recently released a product called DigitalOcean Functions. A DigitalOcean simplicity is at our core, and DigitalOcean Functions embraces this. And you'll see in just a little bit as we build and deploy serverless functions. Now, enough talk. Let's get into the code and show you how we can combine DigitalOcean Functions and Hugo get JSON method to have dynamic data in our static website. For our code examples today, we're going to use my personal blog, auto.xyz, which is a website built on Hugo. Currently, if you go into any of my blog posts on the website, you can read the blog, you can hopefully learn some new stuff, but you can't leave comments. And I would like to add the ability to add comments without bringing in a third-party library. And we're going to do just that with DigitalOcean functions and Hugo's built-in getJSON method. To get started, the first thing we're going to need to do is build our serverless function that's going to be able to uh, retrieve a list of comments for the blog post. So let's go into our DigitalOcean dashboard. And here in the New Functions tab, if we haven't created any functions, we'll be greeted kind of with the welcome screen that'll uh, teach you a little bit more about functions. And um, you know the best way to learn for me is to actually do. So let's go ahead and create a serverless function. I'll click the Launch button and create a new function. So let's go create function. For our runtime, we can build our function with Go. We can build it with Node.js, uh, PHP, or Python. Just to keep it simple, I'll keep the default of Node.js 14, and we'll call this function get blog comments. So we'll click the Create button. It's going to take just a couple seconds for our function to be created. And with DigitalOcean, again, embracing that simplicity, as soon as our function is created, we get an HTTP endpoint that we can call this function. So by default, we have a little bit of starter code here. And I can open up a new tab and call that function. And I'll get the message of hello stranger. And that's because here we are looking for an argument of a name. Otherwise, it's going to say stranger. So we're going to send back hello stranger. But what we want with this function is to get a hypothetical list of comments for our blog post. So we're going to rewrite this function a little bit as uh, let's bring in some comments first up here. So we'll just hard code them for now. We have a list of three comments that we're just going to return. We'll say her body is our comments. And once we hit save, this function will automatically be redeployed. And if we call it again, we'll get our list of comments. Now we have a comment from Chris saying awesome article, an article from Amy, a comment from Amy saying this helped me so much, and a comment from Raman saying that this article is outdated. 
Now remember, for our purposes here, we are hard coding these comments, but you could just as easily you know, store your comments in a database like Mongo or, or Postgres, and then dynamically load them in for each article. But just to keep things simple, just to show you how the technology works, we're gonna hard code some comments and go from there. So now that we have our comments, we have our endpoint where we can get these comments from, let's go into our Hugo application and see how we can load these comments. So in Visual Studio Code here, I have, I've um, opened up the single.html file, which represents the single page view um, or the single blog post view of my blog. And if we scroll down here, we can see that at the moment we don't have any, any commenting functionality, any code. But what we're going to do is we're going to use that getJSON method to get our comments dynamically when we build the application. So to do this, what we're going to do up here on line three is we are going to we're going to create a new variable called comments, and we're going to set that to the result of get JSON and then the URL for our function. This is all we need to do, and what's going to happen when we rebuild our application is that this get JSON method is going to be called at this particular endpoint, and we're going to store the results. We're going to store those comments in this variable called comments. And to show you that this does work, let's just output this list of comments up here at the very top of our blog. And before we do that, I'm going to restart my server here. And let's do this here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run Hugo serve, we're going to disable fast render, and we're also going to pass this ignore cache flag, which is going to tell Hugo that we want to get the latest comments when we build this application initially and not use the, the cached ones uh, from the getJSON method. So running this, it's just going to take a couple seconds for our application to build and we'll be able to go and see if our comments are loaded successfully. Okay, so my application is running. Let's go back into our app here, into my website, and we'll refresh. And now we see this map up here that has this array that has our three comments. Awesome article from Chris. This helped me so much from Amy. And this article is outdated from Raman. Now, you typically wouldn't just want to display the comments up at the, at the very top of the blog. So let's go back and uh, add them to the bottom of our article here and give them some nice styling so that we can see these comments properly displayed. So we'll go back into Visual Studio Code and we're going to find where we want to put these comments and we'll put them right after the article ends. I'm just going to paste in some code here and go over it. So we have a div with an ID of comments and we're just ranging over that comments collection or comments array and we're just going to display uh, who the commenter is, their name, as well as the comment that they left. And then I just added some Tailwind CSS classes because my, uh, my blog is built with Tailwind CSS. So let's save this and take a look at our result now. Now, if we look at the bottom of the article, we have our three comments, Chris, Amy, and Raman. This is awesome, right? That this works great. We have our list of comments displayed, but what happens if we get a new comment added to our blog? So let's say in our function here, we add another comment. So let's say Megan comes across and she also wants to leave a comment saying, this rocks. We'll save our serverless function. And just to make sure that it does work and we do get this latest comment here, I'm going to refresh and we see the comment, this rocks from Megan. But if we go back to our blog and refresh, no matter how many times we refresh, whether it's a hard refresh or a soft refresh, we do not get that latest comment from Megan. And the reason for this is remember that the getJSON method only gets executed when we build our application or we rebuild our application. And at the moment, we're not rebuilding. There hasn't been any change to our Hugo app, so there's no need to rebuild it. But if we stop the server and relaunch it, then we will actually get that comment from Megan. So let's make sure that that works. And once our server is running, we'll go back, re refresh, and now we get this comment from Megan saying that this rocks. And this works the same way if we were to remove a comment. So let's say we deleted the comment from Megan, rerun to make sure that it doesn't exist anymore. 
But in our application, now we have this stale data. Now, how can we get around this? Unfortunately, with the getJSON method, it does only run at build time. So one way we can get around this is to actually write a little bit of JavaScript code in our uh, single.html page to actually go ahead and call this serverless function again from the front end. And if there is any change to the comments to basically uh, recreate the DOM with the new comments, whether they were added or removed. And to show you how to do this, let's um, go back into Visual Studio Code here. And then at the bottom of the page, we'll write a new script tag. And I'm going to just copy and paste, and then we'll walk through it. And let's see what this function does. So what we're going to do is we're going to fetch the data from this um, DigitalOcean serverless function. We're going to get the data as JSON. And then we're going to get our comments div and empty it. So we're going to empty all of the comments that currently exist. And then for each of the new comments that we got you know, on page refresh, we're going to add that comment back into the DOM. And uh, we want this function to load once our page has loaded. So let's also uh, do this. So we're going to, uh, otherwise, because right now this function isn't being called, and we don't want to call this function too soon. Otherwise, if the DOM isn't loaded, then our app is going to crash. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait until our DOM content is loaded, and then we're going to call this method of get updated comments. And that should work. So let's save the application. Let's go back into our app here. We'll refresh. And it looks like we might have gotten an error. Let's move this script here and see if that fixes it. A hard refresh fixed everything. So uh, now we have our three comments displayed, Chris, Amy, and Raman which matches up to the three comments that we have in our current function. But now, since this piece of code gets executed every single time that our page loads, if we were to add new comments, we'll see them reflected as well. So let's go ahead and re-add the comment from uh, Megan, for example, saying that this is so cool. We'll save. And we'll just reload here just to make sure that our serverless function does run and it has that latest comment. And now if we refresh our Hugo application, we'll see the fourth comment added that this is so cool. And if we go and remove a comment, like let's say this one from Amy, again, we'll hit save. As soon as that is rebuilt, we'll see the changes reflected. Uh, so in this case, what we're doing is we're mixing the getJSON method to get all of our comments at build time. And then additionally, once our page is loaded, we use JavaScript on the front end to go ahead and call that serverless function again to get the latest list of comments. And in this particular scenario, you know, the getJSON call is perhaps unnecessary if you're going to make the call from the front end anyway. But there are use cases where you would want to get dynamic data from an API endpoint at build time for your Hugo application. And potentially, you know, if you did want to get some fresh data, you don't have to call it on every single page reload. You can set it on a particular timer, on a particular trigger to go ahead and, and get new data in the front end. So to summarize, Hugo really does excel at being a really powerful, really fast static site generator. But with the getJSON method, you can work with dynamic data, with third-party APIs, with serverless functions, and your Hugo application. And when you combine one of the best static site generators with serverless functions, you can really have the best of both worlds. And finally, whether you're building a static site with Hugo or a different static site generator, you can host it easily using DigitalOcean's app platform, and you can enhance the capabilities and functionality of the static site with DigitalOcean's serverless functions. Thank you. I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you next time.